Hey everyone, I'm Sarah and tonight we are doing a drawing. So um, we are going to be doing, hello Crixano, welcome. Thank you for joining me tonight. Um, all right, so real quick, I wanna go over the supplies I'm using like I do in all of my classes. I've got um, uh, this pencil set, which is called the Giaconda by Koinor and I, I highly recommend it, but you do not have to use anything fancy. You can actually use a number two pencil and a sheet of printer paper is fine. Um, you've got, I, I always keep a couple extra erasers on hand and a pencil sharpener. That's pretty much it. Now I'm using a drawing tablet. I use Strathmore. Um, I use like a nine by 12 drawing. We are gonna be doing this in the landscape orientation, which means horizontal. This would be portrait orientation. This is landscape, and we are doing a landscape tonight. Um, okay, so a couple things that I wanna mention before I get started is tonight we are doing a misty cornfield. That is our, um, our drawing tonight. And so this always reminds me, my mom's family is from Iowa. And I think maybe some of you out there are from Iowa. And so um, this is this is my homage to Iowa because it is a cornfield and Iowa has a lot of corn. Uh, okay, I want to bring up the reference photo that we're gonna be using. So if you look right here, I've got my um, Discord server posted here. So you can type this in if you want, or you can type exclamation point discord in my chat and that will pull up the link or you can find somewhere on my twitch page um there is a button i think it's in under about there's a button that says discord you can click on that and it will also take you and here is what you are going to see when you go to my discord you are you'll you'll have um you're gonna cut it'll be art share and you're gonna have a bunch of channels here. If you go to reference photos, I've already posted tomorrow's reference photo too, that's why you see two photos here, but this is the photo we're going to do. So you would just open this up and you can sit there and use it. Now you can open the original. If I do that, you guys will not be able to see it because I've got this um, set specifically to my Discord window, but um, this is what we're gonna be drawing. It is very handy to have a reference photo like in display somewhere where you are looking. Hold on, let me uh, let me get back to you guys. It's really handy to have that displayed somewhere. Um, you can print it out, you can do whatever you want with it, but I think that even though you're following me, and if you follow me, you should still be able to do it without looking at the reference photo, but I think the reference photo is just very helpful so you know where you're going. You've got like an end game in mind. Okay. Without further ado, let's get started. All right, so I'm gonna actually be starting with my 2B pencil. Um, the B stands for bold. So if you look at the pencil, let's see if you guys can see that. See, it says 2B. Now a number two pencil is an HB. Now, what that means, so there are two drawing scales, hard and uh, bold. The bold ones tend to be darker, the hard ones tend, to, they're not as dark, but they have really nice crisp lines. So if you're doing um, like illustrations or very graphic sketches, like um, let's say you were doing, uh, you know, drafting, like for architecture or something like that, then you would want to use an H pencil. Um, if you're going to be doing drawing where you're going to want to smear things around, then you want to use a B pencil. Now I'm using 2B. Number two is right in the middle. Um, but because it's got a little bit of H qualities, you can't see it as well. So I'm going to be using the 2B so you guys can see it. Now it looks like I need to sharpen my pencil. So let me just go ahead and, and do that. All right. I did not check that first. All right. Let's go ahead and get started. So first we're gonna find the center of our paper. So I would say right about here. 
and just make a little mark right there at the center. Now what we're going to be doing is we're going to do a um, perspective line. So our perspective, everything is going to be going towards, let's see, some point in the distance. And you can use a ruler or I'm going to show you how to get a really nice straight line just by using your um, using your arm rather than your wrist. Okay, so let's see. Let's try. I want to make my point like here, like a little bit off the paper. So I'm going to start probably about, let's see, one, two, two and a half inches down approximately. And I'm going to draw a line from here to like there. That's what I'm doing. So uh, it could be approximately there, I guess. Like that. And that's nice and curvy. We didn't want that. So here's how I get a straight line. There. <laughs> that still doesn't look very straight, does it? All right. I don't know why that's curving. Let's start over. All right. So what you do is you're going to use your entire there. God, that's still not that great. Maybe I should be using the ruler, guys. That's actually better, though. That's not too bad. All right, we've got the problem is when it comes to you're trying to do something off the page. So we're going to start down here, like maybe about two inches up, maybe about an inch and a half. All right. You know what, this time I am going to use the ruler. We're going to do it. <laughs> There's, you know what, it's okay. If you have tools, you can use them. There. Let's just, let's just get it right, you know? Let's just do that. Now I'm going to do another one that's probably about halfway between there. And we're going to the same spot. There. All right, so these are our perspective lines. Now this one at the top really looks wonky. The good news is that this one isn't going to have to be straight. This is actually going to be the top of our corn. So it doesn't have to be straight. <laughs> That's what I'm sticking with. You know, Bob Ross always talks about how you have happy accidents, you know, and um, let me get that off the screen. Um, you know, you make mistakes, just run with it. You know, don't, don't make a big thing about it. it. It is what it is, you know. All right, so here's what we're going to do. So first, we want to mark off, um, we're going to like end our cornfield somewhere. Now I want to just end it probably about an inch in. So I'm just going to draw a little line there straight up and down that lets me know that's where I'm going to end it. So then we can go ahead and take out the rest of these lines. Now always blow, don't wipe because once you start using like the, the B pencils, um, wiping can actually, uh, let me get there's a, it's a little bit bright there okay wiping can actually smear your work so we don't want to do that just yet all right so first things first we're going to actually start uh shading in our skyline now if you have a graphite stick hold on let's see here's my 2b graphite stick you can shade in using this right but I want you to see what you can do with a number two pencil so I'm gonna go ahead and use this so I'm just very lightly shading 
Now I'm gonna leave, every once in a while, I'm gonna leave a little place for clouds. So I'm just very lightly shading. I'll hold this up so you guys can see. See, like I'm hardly doing anything. But every once in a while, I'm just gonna leave a little white area and go around there. This will be my cloud. And you don't have to come all the way down to the cornfield. We're just gonna come a little ways down. I'm gonna leave a little cloud here. And all I'm doing, I have my pencil at an angle and I'm just moving it back and forth very lightly, hardly pressing at all. Just till I get it filled in. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do, I'm going back and I'm just checking. I only got a couple of clouds in there, but I'm going back and checking to see if there's any areas where there's like a large white spaces besides my clouds and I'm filling those in. I'm just filling everything in that, that looks like Okay, so that's pretty filled in. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my spreader. Now, if you don't have a spreader, um, you can actually use your finger. You can use a balled up piece of paper or a paper towel. Um, if you wanna make your own spreader, what you can do is get a piece of paper wet and you can just wind it really tightly. You wanna make it not, just damp, not wet, wet, but like just damp. Wind it very tightly and just make a point with it and then let it dry. And, and then you can make your own spreader. Or you can buy them, Walmart has like two packs of these for like a dollar or something. They're not very expensive, so. All right, so now we're going to take our spreader and just start filling it in. And all this is doing is just filling in all the little areas of white that we missed. Just getting all of that. Now in a moment, we're going to be putting in our sun, but we're gonna use our eraser for that. All right, now when you get to the edge of the page, edges are tricky. So I'm just trying to let it go off the page the best that I can it's going to catch on the edge of the page. There's not really a whole lot you can do about it. Just try to go one direction to go off. Okay. All right, so I'm just gonna very lightly go over these clouds a little bit so they're not quite so white. Just, just, just blend them a little bit. All right, now I'm gonna take my eraser and I'm gonna put my sun in here. Now, It's morning, 
So I'm thinking the sun might be kind of low. And I think I want to put it right about here. So all you do is just make kind of a circle area. There we go. Like that. All right. Now, to create the trees behind the corn, um, you can use your graphite stick again. So remember, this is where our corn is ending, right about here. So I'm gonna just start just making little squiggles, basically. But I'm gonna start making squiggles and I'm gonna go up and over and just make all different heights of squiggles. I'm gonna come down. Now I'm following the reference photo on this, so I'm just using the same kind of peaks and valleys that it uses, but you can make this up and you can totally go your own way and, you know, really get creative. Make sure to change, you know, this is one of the things that happens a lot of times with beginning artists is they, um, they tend to make everything the same height. And I'm not sure why that is because, you know, we, we all know that not all trees are the same height, right? You know, I could see like kids doing that maybe, but um, yeah, for some reason it's, it's a thing even with adult artists. So um, just be aware of that and try to really like change up where things are. Okay, so I'm going to make it so that my son is just coming over the trees. This is misty morning. Okay. Now in the reference drawing, the sun is over here, but I think it should go over here because this is where we're going to have some highlights. It's going to be on this side. All right. So now we're going to fill this in and just do that same choppy. That's the same choppiness. You can do like little kind of uh, circular motions. Like you can go little tiny circles if you want. And that'll help fill it in a little faster. You don't necessarily have to go all the way down because there's going to be some mist here. Remember, this is a misty cornfield. So I'm doing little jagged lines, but like little jagged strokes, but I am doing that circular motion too. So it just fills it in a little bit faster. And again, remember, you don't have to come all the way down because we're going to have some mist. Some mist. Now this part might seem really tedious, you know, because we're just like filling in. And when you're just filling in, a lot of times it seems a little boring or dull, but I encourage you to take a moment and, you know, just meditate a little, just like let yourself get into it, be mindful about it, like feel, you can feel the pencil kind of like, you know, you can actually feel, right, when you're pressing down and you're making motions, you can feel it in your hand, you know, so feel that and just listen to the sound the pencil makes. Just 
just really get into you don't have to think too much about what you're doing so you can just be really mindful about this and just let yourself fall into a pattern I like to use drawing and crochet and painting as tools for meditating. You know, might as well kill two birds with one stone. You make something productive and at the same time, you know, maybe meditate a little bit and uh, build some immunity distress. So I'm gonna I'm giving you like a little bit to catch up in case I went faster which is entirely possible and I've been doing this for a long time so I tend to move kind of fast now I'm going to use my spreader I'm gonna come in and just do little circular motions now here I'm going to start coming down into my white area uh, where we didn't put anything, like the misty area. I'm going to start filling that in a little bit. By the way, I don't know if anybody noticed, it's probably difficult to notice, but I did get a new camera. So you guys are looking at me at a on a brand new digital webcam HD y'all HD my last one was supposed to be HD but I don't think it was and if you go back and look I can tell just in my videos I, I it, this is much better quality <laughs> it's so amazing what quality can really make a difference you know there are times for sure there are times when quality doesn't matter as much but I think in this case it really did I got some tips from some buds they said that my camera maybe wasn't so great and uh, so I went and got another camera Okay, I'm just gonna like get some kind of horizontal lines down here in the white part. Now the reason this is working is because my spreader is dirty. If you don't have a spreader, or your, your finger probably is dirty if you've been using your finger, but um, if you're using a piece of paper, it might not be dirty enough to do this, so don't worry about it. It's fine, you can come in very lightly with a pencil and just do like a very, very light, very light, you know, mark, and then blend that, and that will work as well. All right, so we're gonna draw in our fence when everybody's done. And if you want to, you can actually take your eraser you can put in some more clouds if you want. Like you don't you don't have to leave it. You know, it's just how you want it to look. You are the artist. You can decide. 
you can decide how you want your sky to look. All right, so let's go ahead and draw in our fence. So our fence is gonna go down in this bottom part, right? So our first post, let's see. Well, first and foremost, we're gonna start with our railing, okay? So our railing is gonna start big and then it's gonna to go to very small. So we can use our ruler again, but I'm not going to this time because I'm just gonna sketch it in. But notice it gradually gets smaller. I'll hold that up so you guys can see that a little bit better. You can see it gradually gets smaller as you go off in the distance. Same thing at the bottom. So you start bigger and gradually get smaller. Okay, now we're gonna do our posts. So the post is gonna start like a little bit above and we're just gonna do a, a rectangle, right? And it's just gonna come down a little bit past the fence. Now I'm gonna mark, I want my next rectangle to be about here. These are going to gradually get closer together. So the distance between this is gonna be cut down a little bit and the post is gonna be a little bit smaller. And you're just gonna keep cutting it down. Let's see, we don't wanna to get too, I might be going down too, too fast, hold on. Let me think about this. I might end my cornfield a little bit sooner. Let's see. I tell you what, this is why we plan ahead, right? Because that way, all right, here's what I'm gonna do. All right, I'm gonna move this over just a little bit. And I'll, I'll hold this up for you guys to see how I'm doing it. And it's gonna get pretty close together there. Okay, so let me hold this up. So what I did is I made little marks and I gradually got smaller and closer together as I went in the distance. And I just kind of eyeball it. I don't really, I don't measure or anything like that. You could, you could measure and you could do something that's very precise, but I don't, it starts to, to not look as artistic. I think when you start getting out your ruler and stuff like that, that's why I really didn't even want to use a ruler in the beginning, but these lines weren't, my, my drawing lines wasn't going too well in the beginning. So, okay. So here's the thing that we're gonna do here. This line here also gets narrower, right? So it's gonna come down. Remember these are getting narrow.
to the point where it's just going to become a line. And just to show you what that looks like here on this side, like I just stopped doing the double lines and just got down to where I was just doing lines. Now, inside these posts, we're going to erase out our lines. We're going to erase out our guidelines here. Our, um, the horizontal part of the post, we're erasing that out. Okay, and you only have to go so far because after a while you can't see in between. Now I'm erasing my guideline at the bottom, which you don't have to erase all the way because we're going to be doing grasses and stuff. But there. I always have lots of little bits of eraser all over my desk. need to follow my number one rule which is clean workspace. It's really important, I always stress this to my kids, it's really important to keep a clean workspace because man once it gets messy what a pain in the butt to clean it because you know and it can really mess up your art but it helps you think better too you know it, I, for me anyway if I have a clean workspace like I feel like I can think better Okay. So here's what we're going to do for our corn stalks. We're going to come, we're, we're going to actually put in a solid, solid, uh, pencil. Now you can use your graphite stick for this. And this is going to come down to about halfway between your fence posts. We can fill this in if we want. You don't have to, but would be a straight line going across because all of your corn is going to be planted at a certain height uh, or like at a certain distance from the, the fence post. Now at the top you're going to have, it's going to be pretty jagged because you're going to be able to see all these different stalks of corn in the background so it's going to be kind of a jagged uh, line up at the top. Let me see if I can get this to be a little darker and then I'll show you. So see how it's like a little bit jagged there at the top? That's what you're looking for. I'm just going to go ahead and get my jagged lines in. By the way, if you were going to my YouTube, um, I can no longer post uh, my art, I can do my crochet classes because I write those lesson plans, but um, these lesson plans, a bunch of different artists write, and I've written some as well, um, and we submit them to a company who manages them as a library, and then we all can use them. Well, the company has come out and said that they would not, they do not want us to post um, classes on YouTube, so I will no longer be posting classes on YouTube. Um, my crochet classes are still out there because my crochet classes are 100% me. Um, but because 
not all of these lesson plans are written by me, some of them are written by other people, then um, I have to abide by their rules. So it's a little bit sucky, but you know, that's life, right? That's life. Okay, so I've got all of this. Hello, Bumbo, how are you doing today? You gonna draw a cornfield? Do they have, do they grow corn in Russia? I feel like, I feel like corn is like all over the world. But I mean, I don't know, cause you know, in, in, um, you're reading, no, you do not. Okay, well, there you go. See, see, I thought corn was just everywhere, but it might take very specific soil the Midwest um, in America has a very nice soil. A lot of bread. Oh, interesting, bum bread. How about that? Now what's happening, I wanna show you guys because I the way I was drawing, see how there's like this little part in the middle there? Don't worry about that. We're gonna catch that with the spreader. Don't worry about the fact that you've got like the, if it's creating a line. There was a historical event related to corn in Russia, but I don't know much history. I think it was cornbread or something. Huh, interesting. Well, that is interesting. You should know your history, Bumbo. I feel like history, knowing your history is very important, but maybe... Maybe that just wasn't interesting to you in, in school. I know what was interesting to you. Math. Bumbo is um, a mathematician and he has his own streams that he does occasionally and teaches math. I have learned geometry from him and I know that he's done a trigonometry stream. So I encourage you to check out his stream. It's very interesting. I think he's a very good teacher, especially since some of the concepts he's teaching, I think can be kind of difficult for some people to understand. And I think he does a good job of explaining and, and showing using drawings. So. Illustrations. Okay. So now we're gonna get the part in the middle. And then this is all very choppy and that's okay. We're gonna clean that up. Now this part in the middle, I'm just gonna very lightly draw a line just so I can see where it's gonna be. How's it, how is everybody's week this week? I've been so busy, I haven't been able to really talk that much to anybody. So hopefully everybody's had a great week. Your week this week is yours. I'm not sure what you mean by that. You mean that like the upcoming week, you don't have to do anything, that it's all yours? Is that what you mean? Or this week was your week where you didn't have to do anything? All right. Oh, it was a joke. <laughs> Bumbo, you know I don't always get your jokes. Sometimes they're just too deep for me. Sometimes they are. Okay, so we've got this corn. 
Now we're gonna spread it in. And if you want, I might go, um, just kind of darken some of this a little bit, but you don't have to. All right, so now we're gonna spread it. I promise we're going somewhere with this. I know that right now it just looks like a bunch of blobs, but we're gonna actually be creating edges, just like we did last week with the daisy. So like with the daisy, we created edges, and we're doing the same thing. And you can go ahead and you can do horizontal lines for the, the um, fence post here. So again, this is one of those meditative areas where you can, you know, we're just filling in. So you can just kind of zone out. So I'm trying to do some vertical lines right next to the horizontal lines I did, just so it doesn't look like there's like line and then, you know, stuff coming from it. It's probably gonna look like that a little bit anyway, but we'll be fixing that with our corn. Right now we just wanna get this filled in and as consistent as possible. All right. We're going to fill in the bottom part. Excuse me. A little sneeze there. Just filling it all in. Like I said, this isn't a terribly exciting thing to do when you have to fill in areas, but if you use it in like a meditative way, it can have kind of a multi-purpose. It's both productive and useful in terms of, you know, something else, you know, for meditation. I usually try to do a meditation. I got kind of bad about it. Believe it or not, Corona, dis despite the fact that I'm home more often, I actually have done less meditation, which is the exact opposite of what I should be doing. Because this is the exact time when, you know, depression and anxiety and all those fun things can really hit, especially since my sleep schedule has gotten all funky. Uh, so but before I was meditating about four or five times a day 
different types of meditation. Like it wasn't all the same. It wasn't all just like sitting down. Some of it, like I would do walking meditations, uh, which are actually quite fun. Um, I would go to a park and do a walking meditation. That's pretty nice. Okay. Now we got all this stuff. All of this stuff. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do, this helps to have a kneaded eraser for this because um, if you use... If you use your eraser at the top, you're not going to get as clean of lines and we want to get clean lines. So one thing you can do is you can take a knife and you can actually mold a part of your eraser into a point. Um, that's what you can do like for today if you don't have a kneaded eraser. If you do have a kneaded eraser, then we're, we're just molding the corner into a point. What we're going to do, we are going to do stalks. So first we're going to start with a stalk right here. And then I'm going to actually do some little some lines around it at different levels and these are going to be kind of stocks in the background. All right now so once we have our stock at the top of our stock and I'm constantly kneading this back into its point at the top of the stock we're going to have some some parts that come up that shoot up from it. At the bottom, what's going to happen? See, I'm going to do a couple more shooting up leaves. Or at the bottom, what we're going to do is we're going to have upside down V's. Okay, so we're going to have it's going to go like that, and then like that. You can try to stagger them a little bit so they're not all at the same height and you can also make it so that they all come down at different angles like some of them might go farther out some of them might be narrow okay all right now we're going to do another one not too far from it so we'll do another one like right there Okay, this one I'm going to have, this one's a little shorter. And remember to do like some kind of random, random uh, pieces up here. Now this one's behind here, so we don't have to do anything. I'm going to do another one. Now don't worry, we're not going all the way down with this. Don't worry, like see how that's a little bit fat? We're going to be fixing this with the spreader, so don't worry. If you don't have a spreader, you're going to have to fix it with a pencil, but, but either way we can fix it. So again, we've got some, some going up. Um, 
And then you have your upside down bees. And I'm just reshaping it because not only does it get out of whack, but then, you know, it gets pencil on it. Now this one, I'm not going to put one on the other side. I'm not going to put one over here. I'm just going to put it on the right. I'll do another stock. Do a couple, a couple more. And another one. This one I'm going to do one of those V's up at the top. The other side I might just do some regular leaves. All right, I'm going to show you what we're going to be doing with our spreader. While you're doing that, we're going to come in and we're going to clean up in between. So in between, we're going to actually come in and accent our lines. See what I'm doing there? So I'm just coming into the dark part and spreading it a little bit more and what it does is it fills everything in but it makes it look really nice. Really nice and intentional. Now be careful where you're putting your hand. Mine I've been resting on here. Um, you can actually, let's see, I've got paper towels that I use for my painting classes. You can take a paper towel or another piece of paper and just fold it and put your hand on it and that'll help it from smearing. It helps keep it from smearing. So I'm just going in and I'm filling this in. Now you don't have to do this just yet. I just wanted to show you where we're going to be going so that you have an idea like as you're going along that that you will be able to fix some of the areas. So I didn't want you to think that you're going along and and uh, you know you have to have like these perfect erase lines or anything like that. Okay, and I'm getting to the end of mine, so now this will be harder to do if you don't have a spreader. So, like I said, you can bumble, um, 
Bumble. You can crumble up a piece of paper and do it that way and like make a point with it. Let's see. I'm gonna make some some areas of stock in the background. Mm. All right, so let's continue on. Um, there aren't too many more of these. Let's do. Um, I'm just doing some more like where it looks like corn in the background, you know, uh, let's see, let's maybe do a stock here and a stock here. And then what we're going to do is just start putting some lines in. It doesn't have to be, we're just putting lines in. And these lines should come all the way from the top. Alright. I'm not going to get I'm not doing too much down there. It's just I just kind of dabbed at it and that was about it. Same thing below. They don't exactly have to match up. Like your lines from the top don't necessarily have to match up from the ones at the bottom. Like that. I know I did say Bumble Bumbo. I must have been thinking about you, huh? All right, uh, let's see, hold on. Not done with the eraser yet, sorry. All right. Okay, so we've got to do a couple more of those little, those little upside down Bs. Um, let's see. I'm going to do some more of like the some more of those leaf shapes at the top. Be helpful if I finish my sentences. Don't you think? So now what I'm going to do is we're getting to the place where we just started doing those the crazy line. So now I'm just going to start doing like leaf shapes just every which way. I'm just making marks. Does it really matter? Just as long as you get the idea in there that there are shapes coming off of the corn stalks. And as you get further and further down, it's going to be harder to do. So don't worry too much about it. And we're just going to leave this dark again in the, in, in, in the background. All right. So I'm going to use my spreader and I'm going to come in here and finish spreading in some of these. So this is like illusion drawing. So we're making it look like there's a lot going on. In reality, there's not anything. It's just a bunch of lines. But this is actually one of the coolest things. It's kind of like an impressionistic drawing style. All right. So here's what we're going to do here. We're going to use we're just going to basically make some stock lines, right? So we're coming in. I'm just using my spreader to like create lines in here. All right. 
And I'm not going, again, I'm not going all the way to the end. In fact, I want this to stay dark down here. Okay. I'm going to take a drink of water. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we are going to use, um, if you have different drinking water, water is healthy, that's right. Lots of water. My water has lime in it too. Cause lime is healthy as well. Okay. Now, if you have a 4B pencil, I encourage you to use your 4B pencil. <clears throat> if you just have, if you're just using your number two pencil, then don't worry too much about it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to come in in different places and we're just going to come like underneath our stock area. This is why if you didn't have a spreader, it's not the end of the world because you can you can kind of catch it with the pencil here. And I'm also going to do some, some straight up and down lines. Let's see, maybe do like some, like some squiggly, squiggly areas, excuse me, up the top. All I'm doing is just kind of accenting some of these, these stalks. I'm not, I'm like not even doing very much, right? All I'm doing is coming in and along some of these areas, I'm just making it a little bit darker around those lines. That's it. Nothing fancy. What this is doing is it gives us depth. It gives us shadow and depth. And you can come in and blend this again if you want to. I'm not going to. I'm going to probably just leave it like this. Do some kind of dark lines at the top. Let it come out. You know, you can let your lines come kind of come up over the top of the, the stalks. So I'm using the pencil to just kind of emphasize some of these areas. Now especially down here, because this is where the least amount of light is going to be getting. So we'll make this a little, this area a little bit darker. Some of these lines, I can't even see them very well, so I'm just kind of making it up. You can do that too. All right. Now, now we're going to do something cool. Remember that shape, the upside down V's that we did? We're going to mimic that shape. With the, our 
our pencil with dark lines rather than erased lines. Crixano says, I've been doing sort of all right, been programming some more recently, also been listening to more music. Very good. Yeah, music is kind of like my way of unwinding, you know? Like different types of music. I listen to different types of music to do different kinds of unwinding. But sometimes just something you can jam to. It's pretty good, you know? I'm glad that you've been listening to music and I'm glad you've been getting some more programming done. This week has not been a great week for me to get programming done. I have not been productive at all. I'm not going to lie. Um, all right, so here's where we're going to start. About here. I'm going to start and I'm going to have on either side, I'm going to do that same shape. You love music, listen to it for at least a few hours every day. You love singing, so you do that too. Uh, even though your family probably doesn't like it too much. Huh? <laughs> yeah, well, I get that feeling. I know that very well. Um, so like every once in a while, what I'm gonna do, I like to sing too, but I, I can't guarantee that anybody actually likes listening to me. That's okay, someday. I'll meet someone who thinks I'm a wonderful singer. They'll probably be deaf or partially deaf. Either way, I like it. So now what I'm doing is kind of following. I'm just following like some of these white stalks. I'm coming in and just doing, you know, uh, like a darker version next to them. Let's see. I want to do more out here. Remember that they get smaller. And they're also going to get more amorphous where you don't even see what they are. You just, you see like a line with just some like random little kind of twig looking things coming out from it. All we're doing is giving the illusion that there is something going on in the background here. That that our corn stalks continue. And we'll have a couple like little you know things coming out of the side here down at the, at the very back. Alright. I'm just doing some little lines at the top. Just kind of give it an illusion that there's like many, many things going on here. Let some of my lines come down into my corn. You had trauma back in second grade. You cannot sing in public. You were going back home singing along to a song and a person came up and said right in my face, man you high. In second grade? Who tells someone that they're high in second grade? Like, high on the drugs or like you were singing too high or something? I don't feel like I understand what this dude was saying to you. Also, he's probably wrong. Kids are dumb. You know that kids are probably going to pick on you more for the things you're actually good at than they are for the things that you're not because they're jealous. So they want to tear you down. Yeah, kids are, kids are mean, man. Well, you do have a little bit higher voice, so you probably do sing higher, Crixano. 
I am an alto. Um, I do not sing very high. In fact, that most of the time when I find myself being able to sing well to a song, it's usually a male vocalist where I'm like, oh man, I'm right in this, this range. So I'm doing some like lines in the background here too to indicate that there is something going on. Again, we just, we just want to make it look like there's something going on. Now I want to do a little bit more corn. I'm looking at it, what you guys see, and I'm just going to do like some, some more, just a little bit more like that. Yeah. Just at the top going down. Okay. You were a soprano in middle school choir class. Then yeah, you're probably, you probably are a soprano. That's great. There aren't all that many male sopranos, so that's fantastic. High demand. Okay. Now, here's the thing that I want to do. Uh, I would like to come in and shade in this area down here. All right, so what we're gonna do is kind of uh, just very lightly with your pencil. Now, I think I'm still using the 4B. It doesn't really matter. Your number two pencil is fine. And just kind of come in and just just make it sort of sketchy, you know, just like some areas might be darker than others. I'm not even going all the same direction. I'm just getting some pencil in there. Because what we're going to do is we're going to blend. So using your spreader or your paper or finger, whatever. We're just kind of blend down just a little bit into the area. This is like our shadowy area, right? And I'm just coming in, you can kind of blend it however you want, but I'm just coming in and bringing basically the bottom of my corn stalks here, like this dark area, just kind of bringing it down a little bit into that area. Just giving it a little bit of shadow. Again, it doesn't have to be fancy. There's, we're not doing anything. I'm not doing anything other than just kind of coloring it in. There's lots of little circles. And as it gets farther out, you don't have to worry too much about it. All right. I'm going to take my 2B pencil, or your number two, if that's what you're using, and I'm going to do some grasses coming up this area. So this is just going off the side of the page. That's all it is. And that's probably because this is the edge of the field, right? Now, if you have a graphite stick, you can use a graphite stick to do this. And that gives it kind of a little, little bit more of a textured look. If you do that. But either way is fine. You can always use your blender, your blending stump. Now I'm just going to come in with my eraser and just pull down some lines into this. Just 
makes it look like some grasses in the background. All right. Now, I would like to go ahead. We're going to add some shadow to our fence posts. So you can use, if you have a 4B pencil, I encourage you to use it. Look, I put the spreader back in the wrong place. Um, I encourage you to use it, but otherwise you just use your number two pencils. No problem. Flux, hey, welcome. Welcome, welcome. I was wondering if you were going to show up tonight. All right, so here's what we're doing. We're, we're going to, our sun is over here. So that means that our shadow is going to be on the left side. How are things? The charcoal piece you posted was brilliant. Oh, thank you very much. That's actually one of my favorites. I really like doing um, uh, figure drawing. And so I have quite a bit of figure drawing, but a lot of that's from a long time ago, um, back when I was in college. You were modeling in a stream, very, oh, modding, modding. I read that as modeling and I thought, now that's interesting to model on live stream. <laughs> I was thinking figure drawing, you know, <laughs> that's a totally different kind of stream, I would say. There should probably be a paywall for that. <laughs> All right, so we're doing uh, shadow just on the left side because remember our sun is coming this way. So you are modding in, in a stream. Yes, very different. I was thinking figure drawing, you know, my, my mind just went straight to modeling. Well, Thank you for joining my stream after you finished your other stream. All right, so we're just coming in. Now our, this shadow line is gonna get smaller and smaller, right? Because, because our, our post gets smaller, right? But we are gonna continue as far as we can. Yeah, just chill time now. Oh, and you're arting. Cool. What are you working on? More trees? All right. So I am going to do a little bit of shadow here at the top. green lines thing at the moment in a tree. Awesome. So I'm going to do a little bit of shadow here at the top just because these are in our cornstalk range and it just helps kind of accent that that line. Then I'm going to just also do the bottom but again I'm not even sketching all the way to the end I'm just, just kind of being sketchy about it you got to watch those artists they're sketchy all right now I want to do I'm going to take um, Let's see, we want to put a little bit of shadow underneath here. Going all the way across. And this is where you can like fix some of your lines if you need to. All right, now I'm going to take my spreader 
And I'm going to spread a little bit right above where I drew these kind of dark areas. And what that's going to do is it's going to give it just a little bit of gradient. Just enough to make it look like it's curving. That these are curved railings. Not a lot, just a little bit. Let me get these ones a little bit more since they're closer to us. All right, we'll do the same with the bottom here. Now these bottom posts, I think maybe I want to shade those in a little bit. So I'm going to just very lightly take my spreader and just kind of shade them just a little bit, not a lot. Like I'm barely touching it, but because my spreader's dirty, it's, it's doing something. All right. Uh, you can see this work is interesting to me. I may do this one my style soon. Oh, very cool. If I remember, because I see what I can do with those shapes. Oh. That would be cool. I don't know. Have you actually done any of my classes yet? I don't think so. Okay, so now I'm doing the same thing with with my post. Now, don't forget to go on the left side too, so it's not completely light. That is like a cast, I mean a reflected, uh, it's got a little bit of reflected light. We're not going to actually have any cast shadow, I don't think, in this. Okay. One second. Okay, now let's see. You have to keep cleaning off your spreader. Oh, finger, ha <laughs> ha, yep. It's handy to invest in these. I'm telling you, they're pretty cheap. You can get them at Walmart or any craft store, but it, these are actually a pretty useful invention. <laughs> I, I went for a long time using my finger and it's not like there's anything wrong with that. So what I'm doing now is I'm just kind of going up and down with my spreader. But, um, or you can use a little bit of a pencil. You can use your pencil to do this, but all I'm doing is getting this ready because we're gonna be, we're gonna be uh, adding some grasses here. But yeah, it, these are handy, man. I For a long time, I didn't even know these existed and once I found out, I, I can't go back. It's, it's difficult to use anything other than a spreader because you can be so precise with them and you can do so many cool tricks. So many cool tricks. All right. Okay. So now we're going to come in and I'm going to, I'm taking my 4B pencil. If you're using a number two pencil, then just go a little bit darker. And I'm just gonna do some squiggly lines. Right around, just just right around the post. And you can you can kind of let it trail off a little bit if you want. But right around the post, we're just doing some kind of squiggly lines and this is a 
like I said, you can kind of trail off a little bit. So this does a couple of things. One, it hides the bottom of our fence post. So then that way, and I'm going to connect these right here too and let there be some grasses in the middle there. Uh, so it hides the bottom of our post so we don't have to do anything with the grass or anything there. So that's the number one thing that it does. Also, these are areas where like if the lawn was being cut or if you had like uh, an animal of some kind that was eating the grass, it, it probably wouldn't get right around the post so it's gonna grow taller. So it does have a more realistic look to it. Does the grass just tends to grow up? Or, you know, if somebody's mowing the grass, like they're not gonna get right up on the um, hey Flux, welcome back. I was I was asking, I, I it was before I read that you had left. Um, have you actually followed any of my streams before? Like have you done any of the drawings? I think you've kind of just done your own thing, right? Like, I don't think you've actually followed any. So that would be cool if you did one of them. Even if it's in your own style, that'd be awesome. I'd like to see like how you interpret uh, my particular style. I mean, how, how you interpret my drawings with your style, you know? All right. So we've got some corn. We've got some grasses here. I'm going to put some grasses here in the background. All I'm doing is just taking my pencil and just making some little lines there. Sometimes I do a little, uh, I only know it by its sound effect, which is dig a -doo. <laughs> But, but I just do like a, it's almost like a little vertical W sort of, you know, where you just kind of here, let me show you, let me hold it up. See how like I've got this little W and kind of, you know, and, and it's like a stutter, you know, it's a, a stutter with your pencil. Not yet. You like prompts. Uh, just the time. Yep, for sure. For sure. So, yeah, I'm just going in and putting some lines in here. You can get some lines down underneath. You know, maybe have some grasses that come up. You know, kind of on, on this side of the post that are, they're not as dark as these other grasses. By the way, you guys don't see it. I don't do it as much, but when I draw, everything has sound effects. All, all of my, I'm doing little whooshes and swishes and chigga chiggas and you know, whatever. <laughs> Every, everything's got sound effects when I draw. It makes it more fun. And especially when I was teaching kids, you know, it's how you can help. It's like if you're doing a wisp, you know, you... <laughs> Dithinus, hey, welcome. Hold on. Nah, I allowed it. <laughs> I think it didn't, the chigga chigga, I think, uh, looks very close to maybe other words. So maybe it, it, um, it, it muted it. It was, it asked me, you're not blocked for sure. Welcome, by the way, Dithinus. I don't know, have, if you've, have you been to any of my streams before? I can't remember. Welcome, even if you haven't. Okay. Oh, you've lurked. I see how it is. Lurking and not saying hi. Well, thank you for saying something. <laughs> Shigga Shigga Slim Shady. Yeah. I actually was listening to a little bit of Eminem today. I was. All right. Okay. So. Happy to report it's great reheat. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. Oh, your leftover. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm going to have to try it. I mean, you know, I didn't like any of the ingredients except for the rice. But what what is life if it's not trying new things, you know? But I'm glad to know that it, it tastes great reheated. Did you reheat the rice too or did you make new rice? Because a lot of times rice is so easy to make. I'll just like make new rice uh, to go with. To go with. Okay. You reheated the rice. Yeah. That's good. I mean, rice reheats really well. 
especially I make sushi rice like for everything because I just like it when it's sticky because I can it, it's just easier to pick up but anyway um I, I actually prefer to to use chopsticks when I eat when I whenever I can um so anyway the uh yeah I always make sushi rice cool yep it's good stuff man all right so We've, we've got our corn going here. There's a couple things that are missing though. Remember, we've got the mist up here. So don't forget, we're gonna be, we're gonna be doing our mist at the top. Um, we have this area down here. You use chopsticks every time you eat ramen. Nice. Ramen's also delicious. I do love, I do love some grains. Noodles are great. Rice is great. Corn is great. We're doing corn. Our homage to corn. All right. Oh, yeah, I don't know. I just kind of assumed that it was just a different spelling of ramen. I guess that's on me. Oh, it is the same. Oh, different language. What language? Is that, uh, is that like Japanese or something? I don't know. Crixano, you would know. You would know a different language. You would know to say it in a different language. You're the language guy. Oh, Korean. Ah, I see. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, if you have, if you have a graphite stick, I highly recommend that you use it. And this is what you'll do. We're just going to do like kind of chunky marks down here. Okay. But I want you to be able to see how you could do this with just a pencil. So I'm just going to do like kind of like I did my grasses here. I'm just doing some, some different, I want this to come off the page though. This is important. Or the other option is you could decide to like draw a line and you could make that the bottom of your page. It's up to you. I'm going to let mine come off the page. All right. So here's the thing about coming off the page, kind of like when we were doing over here, we were, we were kind of, uh, you know, shading our sky, then you get these, these areas where it, you only want to go one way because if you come up the other way, you're going to end up having little, little dark chips at the bottom. So you can only go one way. So what I do is I just go ahead and get some lines down there. Just get some good lines going. Then, then I come up from those lines and that's how I get, that's what I do the rest of it. You just need it to look choppy. The thing is, is we want to have different directions, all different directions. If you're using your graphite stick, you're, you're going this way and then this way and then this way, you know, so all different directions. All right, let's go all the way across the bottom now. Okay. You guys might've noticed that in my reference drawing, there is a birch tree here. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't want to draw the birch tree. So I'm going to ask you guys who is in, who are in chat, your opinion. Let me really quick. I'm going to continue going across here. I want you to continue that too. I'm going to bring up, I need to make sure that my discord. Oh, nope. My, I was, I went off. Okay. So I am going to bring up the, um, reference drawing. And I want you to tell me, so this has, notice that this has the birch in it. So I'll be honest, I've done the birch before and I'm not a fan. I mean, I, I like, it's okay, but it looks out of place to me. I don't know, um, Krixana, maybe you can tell me how many birch there are in Iowa, but I don't think there are that many. So I feel like the birch seems out of place compositionally it's great because it adds some interest on the right hand side uh but i think that it it's not it doesn't flow to me so all right so you guys have seen the birch i'm gonna bring discord back i want some votes i want to know all right so flux is for the birch all right <laughs> You don't know what a birch looks like in real life. Uh, that's interesting. 
there's actually there's a phenomenon there's actually a phenomenon where um you could have seen something every day for who knows how long and never knew what it looked like until it was pointed out to you that and i forget what it's called but it's like a psychological phenomenon that like all of a sudden then you start seeing it everywhere because it all it's been pointed out to you um I'm going to be honest with you. This is too dark here. So I'm, I mean, not too dark. Two, one value. One single value, it's all medium value. So I'm coming in and adding like some dark areas to give it interest. There's, I wanted to have different values. You just looked it up on Google Images. Okay, so, all right, hold on, hold on. It's skinny white with black bark spots. Yes. Uh, but change its direction to go with the flow of the picture. What do you mean? Hold on. Okay. Let me get over to the birch area. So now what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm not going all the way off the page. No, no, I know you mean that the birch to change its direction. Do you mean just to change it to where it's angling this way? Or I'm, I don't know what you mean by change its direction to go with the flow of the picture. Okay. So I'm getting looser and looser. Like I'm not getting my grasses in. Lean it to the right. Okay. That's what I thought you meant, but I wasn't entirely sure. I wasn't clear on that. All right, I'm going to leave off over here, just some, some random, little rando lines there. Okay. Or as one of my friends would say, randy lines. <laughs> that is not, the abbreviation of random is not randy. I'm just telling you guys, don't use that. It means something entirely different. My lines are not Randy. <laughs> they are not. They are not looking for a good time. They want to stay where they are. They're random. Okay, so rando. It, uh, yes, it is rando. Okay, rando means random. Randy means horny. So, you know very different in meanings and it was really hilarious when said friend used it and and i pointed it out and he kept insisting that it that uh it was wrong but it was really funny just to read it in the context that he was using it because he meant it as random it was pretty funny i'm not gonna lie pretty funny okay so i'm using my spreader now, if you're using your finger, this might actually be easier because the spreader is kind of shaped like a pencil. So getting to the edge of the, the um, you guys don't know that in America. I know it, uh, but I think not. Well, first of all, my friend is not in America, um, but I still feel like he should have known it. Uh, yeah, no, I know it. So I, I just think, I just think it was just one of those things, kind of a lost in translation thing, you know, you know, you know how there are words you use Randy more than horny. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Like I, I, it's not, uh, it's not an uncommon term, you know, so I don't know. It was funny. It was funny. All right. So I'm, I'm, uh, filling all this in. You've never used either? Well, Crixano, we're a bunch of degenerates. So, you know, maybe it's a good thing that you haven't used it. <laughs> like, at least I can't speak for Flux, but as for myself, I'm, I'm a degenerate. I admit it. Randy might very well be my middle name, so... Okay. All right. So here's what I'm going to do. So did we ever have a vote 
on the on the birch. Flux says to go ahead and put it in, but have it leaning to the right. Anybody else have an opinion? I actually have enough viewers to have a vote now. Normally it's just like two of you guys. <laughs> so I I feel like I need I need some uh you know. I need something. All right. If I, if nobody says anything, we're going to add it. Okay. You've heard of the, l oh wait, hold on. No, Dithinus, you totally have an opinion. First of all, your opinion always matters to me. Second of all, it doesn't matter whether you're drawing or not. You are viewing, your opinion matters. So I'd like to know what you think. Compositionally, I'm not going to lie. Compositionally, the birch is nice because it adds like kind of a, it, uh, it adds some interest to the right hand side. However, it's not necessary. You can still have a really nice drawing without the birch in it. Uh, so it's really up to you guys what you think would look better. Okay, Krixana says, you heard of the latter. Uh, you just didn't know how people use small talk and it's acceptable or not. Oh, huh. well, so like me, I don't care as much about what's acceptable or not. I mean, certain, certain social groups, for example, when I'm teaching children, I would not talk about those kinds of things. Um, but you know, teaching adults or when I'm hanging out with my friends or whatever, like there, there is no time where I don't use certain words. Probably. Uh, I cuss like a sailor. I, um, think about sex a lot. So I talk about it a lot. Um, yeah, all of those things are, are, make me, uh, like I said, a degenerate. So, you know, that's why you love me though. I'm not your average art teacher. <laughs> You're worse than degenerate. You're too lazy to bother. You like pineapple on pizza? Wrong. Okay, I, you are a degenerate for that because even I don't stoop that low flux. Come on. Pineapple on pizza. That's so gross. <laughs> you swear like an Irishman. Nice. <laughs> I love it. All right. Okay. You love pineapple on pizza too? Crixano. What is up with my stream today? I can't handle this. I don't know. I might have to I might have to quit. No, I'm just kidding. I won't quit over pineapple on pizza. Okay. You wonder if it might be cool to depict the scene as like the edge of the yard of a farmhouse, um, place like a maple tree. Okay. Well, you're requiring me to know what a maple tree looks like in my head. Um, <laughs> further back on the right, going off the edge of the drawing. Okay. Like over here, putting a tire swing or a tree. Oh man. Death. I like the way you think. All right. The problem is, is I don't know off the top of my head what a maple tree looks like. That I always think of maples with like the, those, like the Japanese maples, like fire, like fiery red leaves. Um, Bumbread, I want you to know that kudos to you for not liking pineapple on pizza. And also cold pizza is delicious. I 100% agree. Okay. So unless the question is binary, yes or no. Well, it was binary. Thank you. <laughs> but I like your idea too. I mean, we can add, okay. So, so Dithinus has, has linked a, oh, look at that. Now is, the, is that maple? It looks like an oak tree, but I, I see what you're saying. Okay. So you guys want to make it up? Let's make it up. Come on. You know, I mean, what else? Why not? All right, so, so we've got a tree here. I'm gonna, I'm just gonna kind of, you know, get like a root kind of thing going. So roots are always kind of um, triangular in nature, you know, where they they get are small, and then they get larger. Okay, now we need a branch coming towards us, right? So this is the hardest part, right? Is, is the branch coming towards us. 
I don't know if I'm going to be able to get the tire swing in there. Maybe. Let's see. So maybe. I'm just drawing. I'm just drawing, guys. We're just going to make this happen. All right, so right now I'm using, just so you know, I'm using my 4B pencil, so that means that you need to press down a little harder if you're using uh, two, uh, number two pencil. Okay. So we've got this tree over here, and I'm going to just fill it in. All right, so first I'm going to fill in the trunk. We're just making this up. So you said the tree is going to ruin your drawing. Well, you know what? Don't add it then. I'm serious. Like, don't add it. I'll show you what you can do. If you really think that you don't want to do the tree, then don't do the tree. This we are we are going a hundred percent off script here. We are taking the advice. Of, of the one non-drawing person in the stream. <laughs> but this is okay. I, I like this. I like going off script. You got to go off script in life. Life is too boring otherwise. Don't do the expected all the time. All right. Yeah. That's true. You know what? Actually, Dith makes a really good point. Don't be afraid of making mistakes, right? You know, so Bob Ross says this, right? There are no mistakes, only happy accidents, which isn't true. You can actually make a mistake. Um, I'm reading a, well, I'm not reading it. I've already read it, but there's a really good book, really, really good book called The Design of Everyday Things. And it is by Don Norman, who is amazing. You know, he is the one who um, gave us, who told us about the Norman doors and ruined our life because now we can't unsee them. Um, but anyway, in our book club, we are reading this book, or we were. Um, and one of the things he talks about is he actually splits up mistakes and slips. So there's two different kinds of errors. A mistake is where you intended to do something a certain way and it didn't turn out the way you wanted it for whatever reason. Um, a slip is where, you know, you, uh, you know, you accidentally make a line on a page and now you've got to do something with it. So what Bob Ross is talking about is usually more like slips, right? You came prepared a tree earlier. Oh, well, Flex, you do a lot of trees. Hold on. I'm going to... Is this in Discord? Oh, yeah, you did do a tree. Did, did you post that in Discord? If you guys go to my Discord, like I said, there's a button somewhere here. I'm just going to... There you go. That'll give you the link. So if you want to join my art share server, there you go. Take that link. So yes, uh, Flex just posted his tree in there. So if you guys want to go check out, check that out, you can. Because I don't know if you click on your link, I don't know if it'll allow people to see it if they're not part of the Discord. But everyone can join my Discord. Okay. So we are talking about slips and mistakes. So this is... You shouldn't be afraid to make either. I mean, the fact of the matter is, is nobody has all of the answers. What I'm doing by right now is right here in like the, the creases where the tree meets, I'm making it a little bit darker. And then we're gonna make it a little darker on the bottom of our trunks. So we're pretending as if this isn't gonna have leaves. It is gonna have leaves. But we're, we're going to go ahead, always do things. It's kind of like when I taught my eye class. You always draw things as if there's not anything on top of them, right? So like the eye, you draw as a sphere. You don't draw it as just the part that you see. 
Like that's important. Okay. All right. So we've got this. Um, I'm thinking about the tire swing. We'll see, Dick. We'll see. You're getting your tree. Okay. So what we're going to do first. Oh, you're halfway through your next one. Nice. Life being boring, boring is a million times better than some of the things you've experienced. I don't know, man. I mean, I can't talk about your experiences, but I'm going to tell you some of my quote unquote worst experiences gave me like the biggest lessons in my life. They taught me, you know, who I want to be. And, um, I don't know. I think I got more value out of, out of messing up than I did, uh, from the, the boring times. I don't have that many boring times though. I mean, you heard about my degeneracy. Bo boring is, you know, it's just a state of mind. Okay. So now I'm going to do some grasses. I want to do some grasses at the bottom of the tree. So I'm just doing like some, you know, some lines here. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. My lines make noise. Okay. And we want to get some grasses on both sides. Again, just like over here, you know, the, the, tr the tree trunk is like a harder place to, um, to, to, uh, draw. Okay. So here's what I'm going to do. Um, I am going to allow the grasses to come towards us. Okay. Where well, this yard hasn't been mowed in a little while. All right. So, so it's going to come towards us. So it's going to come down in a line off the edge of the page and it's going to come and kind of meet this here like that. We are making this up though. All right. So I'm going to get my blender. You know, Dithinus, oh, well, thank you. Well, see, there you go. <laughs> well, it was your suggestion. Um, I just realized, did you ever say how you feel about pineapple on pizza? I feel like I, I need to know this about you or we cannot continue to be friends. <laughs> I'm already debating my, my, my uh, situation with Flux and Crixano there. I don't know. I just don't know. Okay. The problem you have is when life itself requires these mistakes in order for people to improve. It's true. I mean, you can't get better. It's kind of like, you know, uh, I'm going to finish reading what you said, but I, I need to tangent for just a second, but here's the thing. You know, when I give feedback at the end, I talk about how we have to give, we, we not only give positive feedback, we give negative feedback as well. Um, that's important because you need to know what you're not doing well in order to improve. If you do everything well, you can never improve, right? So you have to make mistakes. It's, it's crucial to your self-improvement. Okay. Now I'm going to continue reading what you said, which is de detrimental to society overall because you're starting off unknowledgeable rather than the other way around. I don't know if I can explain this well. Well, I will be honest. I don't fully understand what you're saying. Uh, so your problem is that with the way life works, not that I can really change that, I suppose. Oh, I see. So you're saying, well, here's the thing. Uh, there's a couple ways around that. You can do a lot of studying or you can go out and make a lot of mistakes. You know, I mean, you guys are so young, like, well, Flex, you're with me. We're, we're not, we're not young. We're not spring chickens anymore, but the rest of you guys are very young, like, Go out and have a good time, man. Make mistakes. Fuck up. You know, that's like, that's what life is about. Uh, Flex says, I mess up all the time and, and some became or inspired your best art. Yeah, for sure. I, that's some of my best art has been mistakes. I mean, like 100%. Um, one of my pieces that I love and it actually got torn. I'm so sad. It was a woman. It was one of my figure drawings and it was like this ink 
drawing that I did and I kind of did her like off to one side and then there was like this giant area of just like space and I, it was like an ink and watercolor and it was really cool but it was missing something and I never knew what it was well I had it in like a portfolio bag that was burgundy it was like kind of a maroon color at some point mineral spirits spilled on that bag and I didn't I didn't realize that it had happened well here's the thing so the original drawing I did on green paper is like you know like a very large drawing and I'd done it on green paper and um, what happened is the mineral spirits washed the burgundy across the page like in this like kind of puddle and um, and then it dried like that because I didn't know that the mineral spirits had spilled one of my best pieces of art and, and I, I'm just so sad that it got torn it got torn in one of my moves but um man I'm telling you that I couldn't have planned it I could not have planned that any better like it, it just happened it was just it was a slip it just happened and you know it's one of my best pieces so uh, uh there you go okay we gotta get some leaves on this tree let's make this tree not uh bare all right so here's what I'm gonna do so leaves are tricky so I'm just gonna start doing little tiny squiggles I'm gonna hold this up so you can see all right so I'm just doing little squiggles little squiggles okay now leaves are particularly difficult because the fact of the matter is is that nobody ever considers what leaves actually look like now I've done a lot of tree drawings you know but it's you don't want to draw each individual leaf right you know because uh so now what I'm going to start doing is as I get closer into the tree I'm going to start doing like little hooks like little loops like that right but the thing is is that ultimately it never ends up looking like a tree all right so in between some of these leaves I'm going to do little squiggles to make it darker in places but I'm just doing these little like it's just little use little use mm. okay the way you conceptualize the way the universe should work <laughs> okay I gotta stop you right there the universe way the way the universe should work the universe works man it works exactly the way it should that's that's the beauty of it like things happen exactly the way they should happen because they do happen that way so there you go um, it's vastly different from the way it currently does and I suppose I'm having trouble having hope in the universe well all right so this is a deep first of all I want to encourage you to look into something called Taoism T-A-O-I-S-M Taoism I I highly encourage that I started reading uh, Taoism stuff when I was like about 12 and it has really formed my um, opinion especially since you like theology I think you would be very interested because it's um, it's a very interesting religion because it's not quite a religion it's more a philosophy than anything else but um, but do people do actually practice it as a religion um, so the universe just is right it just is you're a part of the universe like you are the universe the other thing you should probably look up is panpsychism because that's another thing that kind of feeds into that where like you're a part of the universe consciousness right like you you are the universe experiencing itself through you <laughs> I know this is like really trippy and I didn't expect to be talking about this I'm not actually liking how my trees look in here so I'm just gonna start doing little squiggles I'm, I'm literally just doing like little tiny weird circles and C's and you know whatever we're just gonna make it we're gonna tree you are going to bend to our will today that's what's gonna happen 
This is what happens when you just make stuff up. This is, sometimes it doesn't always work out. Okay. I'm telling you, trees are hard, especially if you're not looking at something, you know? I mean, I could go find a picture of a tree. I mean, I know Dith shared one with me, but like I could find something at this angle. But regarding the universe, the thing is, I look at it this way. You can either accept that it is the way it is because the universe is much bigger than you, so you're not going to be changing it. So either accept that it is or don't and be miserable, honestly. Like, like the, the, the harder you fight against something that you can't do anything about, the, the more miserable you're going to be. Um, that I'm not, oh God, I'm not liking this tree. Hold on. Let's get another branch in there. Maybe, maybe we have a branch that comes down this way, right? Maybe, maybe I should have just left it a dead tree. <laughs> maybe it looked all right as a dead tree. All right. Also, I'm using totally a 4B pencil. Hold on. Hold on. You know what always makes things look good? The spreader. So let's see. Let me, let me get this going. Okay. Uh, so this isn't looking great, but... We're just going to make some, I'm just making some branches. Yeah, well, my tree looks terrible too, Crixano, and I'm the teacher. So, you know, think about how I feel. <laughs> Actually, I feel fine. Whatever. You know, I mean, the thing about it is, is that we tried something and it either works or it doesn't work. You know, I mean, that's life. That's life. You know, I am going to have another branch here coming down. I'm just making branches and eventually it's going to look like something. <laughs> it might not look like a tree, but it'll look like something. Okay. I'm not going to lie. This sweater is kind of hot to be wearing in Florida, but otherwise what I'm wearing isn't exactly, I mean, it's not indecent. I wore it out today, but it's not exactly, uh, stream appropriate so so I put a little sweater on because I thought um oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna look so prim and proper for my stream I'm using my hair to cover the in incredible cleavage that's going on and you know uh and uh yeah now I'm bloody hot this is not pleasant <laughs> uh. all right Okay, so let's see. You can accept that something is completely orthogonal to my core beliefs. It's just not something you're willing to do. Well, I mean, you know, like I said, you can either accept it or not accept it. It really is a, a binary choice. There is no changing it, right? There's no other option here. You cannot change the universe. I'm going to go ahead and tell you, as someone who thinks very highly of herself, I mean... I put myself at like almost goddess status, okay? Like in my view. So if I can't change the universe, sorry, but nobody can. <laughs> That's the way I look at it. You gotta, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it ain't gonna happen. So, you know, live with it or, or don't, you know? And like I said, if you don't, you're just gonna make yourself miserable. Okay, let's see. Let's see. I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this and deciding what I want to do here. Maybe I have a branch here that's got like some little leaves. Like, so maybe this branch here doesn't have a lot on it. You know, we'll just, we'll just put some, I'm just doing little round squiggles. It is hard. You know what, Bumbo? That was pretty. Let's see. So I'm not, I'm not going to finish this. I'm going to let this branch. I am. This is just for you, Dith. 
So we're going to make a little. It's going to be thicker on this side than it is on the other side. And that's it. I'm just going to I'm going to leave that like that. Okay. All right, here's what I'm gonna do. So I'm, I'm continuing to draw branches. We're making it happen. Like I said, it's gonna look like something. Might not look like a tree. You think the tree looks great? Well, I appreciate the vote of confidence. <laughs> I'm not sure. I think you're just being nice. But, uh, but anyway, I put a tire swing in there for you. So how I made the tire swing, if you're interested, guys, I just, I did like a little, um, Cause I did that kind of fast. I'm going to do it big so you guys can see. So I did like a, like a, a very skinny zero, like a skinny zero. And then on one side, I just filled out on one side like that. And then I just did kind of a, you know, a straight line going to it. I don't even think it's connected. That's all I did. And I'm knocking everything over. All right. Okay. So, spreader. Spreaders always make everything better. That's been my experience. So we're gonna spread like we mean it. All right, so the only other thing you try to do is forget about everything because that's the only thing you can. Wait, what rhymed? Which, which, which? part rhymed. I didn't even know I was doing it. I'm a poet and didn't know it. <laughs> that was intentional. I'm a cheese ball and I do know it. Spreaders make everything better. Oh yeah. All right. Maybe that's my, maybe that's my new little catchphrase. Spreaders make everything better. So I'm just spreading now and I'm just doing little tiny circles, little tiny circles. Okay. Tree is fine. It's just a little dark. It's a little dark. Oh yeah, it is a little dark. Well, we can fix that. And thank you. Okay. So I'm going to continue spreading for just a minute here and we can fix the darkness. I told you I was a goddess. I can fix the darkness. I know how to do that. The darkness inside you. No, I'm just kidding. It's just the darkness of the tree. I'm not that good. I can help you with the darkness inside you. That's about as good as it gets. Okay. Ooh. Edges of the page, y'all. Edges of the page. Pain in the butt. All right. Okay. I'm going to be okay with the tree how it is. First of all, this back here, notice there's like this weird white spot going on. That's not okay. So first of all, we're going to like fill some of this in. And it could be with other tree parts that are coming down from the back. Could be, we've got other tree, you know, like, cause we're gonna have branches that go, go out that way, right? So, but whatever, we've gotta put something there because that can't happen. We can't have like a weird white space that just looks odd, okay? So. Forever paper is needed. What? Invent that, Flux. You were a chemist. I feel like you can do that. Invent that. Okay. Okay. Now it just like is some random thing in the background. Here's what we're going to do. I don't like that. I'm going to make this look like do 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 little grasses going in the background. Okay. Now check this out. Take your eraser and just dab at 
You can actually do it if you have a kneaded eraser. You can make it, seriously, you think the tree looks nice? You capture what you had in mind really well. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Diff. Well, the picture helps. But I mean, I knew, I, I knew what you meant. I grew up with an oak tree that had uh, a tire swing, you know, so I had a tire swing growing up. I broke my arm on it a couple times, <laughs> you know. Actually, I think I only broke my arm on it once. And technically, very technically, my arm was already broken. Uh, so what I'm doing is I'm just coming in here and I'm just making little eraser lines. So it's doing two things. One, it's making this like a little less intentional looking. You know, it's it's like taking out some of my intentional lines and and blending things. Um, but also it's lightening it up a little bit because as Flux said, it was a little dark comparatively to the rest of the picture. Now, keep in mind though, that it is morning. You know, the sun is just coming up. So we are gonna have some dark parts of the tree, but that should lighten it up a little bit. And what I'm gonna do, I am gonna keep some dark areas in my trunk. And I'm just bringing in some, some of my, you know, I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. So maybe just dark on one side. So, you know, because like our shadow, so like our sun is over here. So maybe we're just gonna just darken it on one side, you know? So now I'm just, I'm really just coloring at this point. Your whole drawing is much darker than mine. Well, I mean, that might be a good thing, right? You know, your tire swing was on a mulberry tree. I think it's M-U-L-B-E. Well, I don't know because I have a friend whose last name is Mulberry. M-U-L-B-E-R-R-Y, I guess. I don't know. So now I'm just being more intentional about where my shadow is. So my shadow is like, you know, on, on the side that's coming towards me and the side that's away from the sun. So you guys got a little tree lesson, even though it probably wasn't the best lesson, but yeah. Ah, good. Okay, so Flux just made a point that he goes into the woods to study trees because he draws trees. Here's the thing. This is the key. This is the key to becoming a better artist. If you want to know what something looks like, go draw the crap out of it. You know, go out and study what it looks like and draw it and draw it and draw it. Take a journal with you and draw. And, you know, that is how you learn what something looks like and you get really good at it. I clearly have not drawn very many maple trees. As you can tell, this doesn't really look like one. I mean, it looks like a tree, you know, I don't know about a maple tree, but you know, whatever. It is what it is. Um, we haven't even finished the yard, y'all. I just want you to know there's supposed to be some stuff going on in the yard. <laughs> I just haven't done anything with it yet because we were focusing on the tree. But I like it. I think it was an excellent idea. Thank you, Dithinus. I appreciate that. Um, all right. Here's what we're going to do. So if you have... A graphite stick I would use this and what you're gonna do is you're just going to like fill in the yard like this now if you don't have a graphite stick you're going to very lightly come in and you're going to just do kind of a um, shading but just very lightly okay you're just very lightly shading you're not doing anything we're not I'm just going back and forth, you know, so it's, it's like laying some, some foundation here. Okay. 
I'm gonna do some over here. I feel like, hmm. I want some grasses or something here. I don't like this. So I'm just doing some little digadoo grasses. There's a, there's a band that I like called the Asylum Street Spankers. Ass. Yep. Um, they have a lot of kind of very silly songs, um, but like they're, they're, they have a lot of humorous songs. Um, but there's, there's one of their songs and I think the name of it might be Digga Digga Do. Anyway, I like it because the, the, uh, well maybe, hold on. Yeah, I think it's called Digga Digga Do. Anyway, I like it because that's like a lot of what they say in the song. Okay, so you can use your finger and you can spread or you can use your spreader. I'm going to use the side of my spreader. Okay, one last thing to do. All this did... All this did was give us some texture in the front so it didn't have like that weird white look. You can actually, um, if you want, so our sun is this way. So if you want to have some, some shadow that comes this way, like so, so your, your sun is gonna make the shadow, you can. I think that we should have some cast shadows because like to me it's weird to not have cast shadows. So it gives the illusion, the illusion of a cast shadow. Okay. All right, mist, we need our mist. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take our eraser and very lightly start to do circles at the top. I always give myself like a little rhythm when I'm, when I'm uh, doing something like very methodical. Like when I, you know, before I was telling you like how I kind of meditate when I'm, uh, when I'm like coloring things in or shading things in, just give yourself like a little beat, you know, in your head, like a, like a little rhythm that you kind of, you can bounce to and it like, I don't know, it makes it easier. Okay, so I'm, I'm, I'm just doing little circular motions right at the top of my corn. And some of this is going to go over the trees, right? And actually take out some of our trees because, well, you know, sometimes mist covers the trees. It happens. Okay. Now, spreader. We're gonna do the same kind of very lightly, very lightly. I cannot emphasize this because you don't want like big old circles Especially if you have a dirty spreader, you can maybe use an area that you haven't on your spreader before, you know, like the side of it or something like that. Or you can use your finger. In fact, that's what I'm going to do because I feel like I'm going to get a nice even spread. Okay. Now I do want some of my corn I want to show up right at the top so I'm just coming in this is just me you do not have to do this but I do want some of my 
corn to like show up in the background. So I'm just coming in and adding like a few little extra lines where it got blended or erased out. But I am thinking this is a success. I actually even like the tree. I, I think it turned out okay. I think if you just keep working it and you keep manipulating it, you know, eventually it'll work. It, it'll turn out in the long run. Okay, so musically it's boards of Canada at the moment. I don't know them. I don't think I know them. Boards of Canada. That sounds really familiar though. Um, some old soul. I love soul. Um, and then you said you enjoyed some Beastie Boys. Yep. I love Beastie Boys. Um, actually one of my favorite Beastie Boys song I think was off of License to Ill. It's Get It Together. I'm pretty sure that's the album it was on, License to Ill. Anyway, that's one of my favorite albums too. Um, Regulate by Warren G. The Thundercats theme song. I don't know the Thundercats theme song. I probably should. War Pigs and... Ami... E Evil uh, by Diamond Head. I don't know them. I don't know that one. So, all right. So some new music. So I'm gonna have to like write all these down so that I can go look all of them up. Oh, am I evil? I don't know why. Oh, because I saw a me. Sorry. Am I evil? Gotcha. Yeah, I was definitely not reading that correctly. Okay, so, ta-da, here's our misty cornfield. I'm going to sign this. You want to sign your work? Okay, gotcha. Yeah, sorry. I'm, I, I, I'm not always good at reading typos. So, like, sometimes I am, though. Sometimes I can read past whatever, you know. But, you know, it's getting late. Okay, so, let's take a look at this. I've signed it. I'm ready to go. I probably could continue to work a little bit on my tree. Um, another thing that I think I could really do is I could really come in here. Let's see. This is a 2B. I want my 4B. Or even my 6B. I could come in here and I could really darken up some of these areas. Like especially down at the bottom here where like the bottom of the corn stalks would be very dark. You know, so like I could see, I'm not going to do this whole thing on stream, but like you could definitely, like I can see where like darkening this up a little bit in places I think would really help and it would help balance this tree because this tree is a little dark and it should be, that's fine. But what that, because it's away from the sun, right? But the problem is, is that we don't have the dark areas in, in these other places, right? So we need to this is called value. So your value is how dark or light something is in art. And uh, we don't have enough dark value over here. All right. I'm, I'm using my 6B pencil as like a... If you try Boards of Canada album, um, music has the right to children. It's a good start. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm going to write all of this down for sure. All right, so, so see, just by adding that little bit, I didn't even do very much, and already it's starting to look more balanced, right? You know, I mean, that's the thing is that this isn't looking very balanced, but because we don't have very much dark on this side, you know, so I could also come in here. And I could do some dark in here, you know, maybe just a little bit. It doesn't have to be a lot, but just enough to like balance this out so that we don't have like this one, like boom, really dark thing. You know, we've, that that's an important part of composition is you want to have balance. So, so I'm going to come in here and I'm going to do more of this later and then I'll post my finished work in, in the, um, in 
the art crit. So did anybody post their stuff? It sounded like I got, I just heard some, uh, oh, well, I can't smoke weed because I'm a very, very allergic to it, but I bet you I can still trance out to it. So I will check it out for sure. But thank you for that tip. I will, when I listen to it, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll let, I'll let my weed smoking friends know about that. <laughs> All right. So let's take a look. Let's see. Let's see what Discord has. We've got some posts. Okay. So Crixano has posted. So I'm going to pull up Discord. Okay, so for some reason, one of these is very yellow. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look at this one. All right. First of all, this is excellent. I, I like it. Oh, no, no, it's no problem. Um, okay, the very first thing I'm going to tell you is I absolutely love your tree line. Like, that is amazing. Like, it, it looks very windswept. And it's got like a, a nice, um, like a softness to it that I really like that I don't even know if I could capture that. But especially, hold on, let me see if you guys can get my mouth. Especially this right here, where you bring in like a, a kind of a second row of tree, tree line here. It's really nice. But this right in here with this like cloud in the background. Yeah, I'm digging that a lot. Okay, so let's take a look at some of the things that that you could uh, work on. So I definitely think that your stalks of corn kind of all, you did a good job of crossing them over each other, but I think that the stalks of corn could be like maybe a little more spread apart and um, not um, not all the same height. Because I think if you like, say, say you took this one and brought it all the way up and then maybe you took this one over here and brought it all the way up, you'd end up having it. It would look more like happenstance rather than um, exactly the same all the way across. That is the only suggestion. I think you did a really great job with using your eraser. Um, and like I said, the, the way they cross over each other is actually really good. And it looks like you could really got in here and made some detail. Okay, so we have... Uh, Wednesday. Hi. Well, I appreciate you saying hi to me today and thank you um, for your uh, watching my tutorials and joining my stream. I really appreciate you coming on. Even if you're just lurking, it's not a big deal. I like that. I don't mind. Um, but yes, and thank you for saying hey today and welcome, officially welcome to the stream. You were already welcome before. Uh, okay. So continuing to talk about Crixano, um, the, the grass here is really good. You could probably come in a little bit darker. Are, are you using a number two pencil? If so, this is excellent. Um, but if you can come in a little bit darker here on the post, like on the left, I think that would add some good value. You actually have great value in here. You weren't kidding when you said yours was darker, but I, I actually like that. Um, additionally, you could maybe make... You're using a 2B. Okay, perfect. Um, I was going to say, you got a lot more values than I would expect from a number two pencil. So that's good. Um, oh, you did use a 4B. Okay, great. I would come in with your corn stalks and maybe make these a little less. See how they kind of go in a straight line? Maybe make them just like a little, like maybe some just slightly taller, you know, and you can even bring your eraser down into it. You can use this actually you could do the circular eraser marks that we did at the end to make the mist and you could come in and actually just kind of demolish this area a little bit and just like break it up. Let me come back to mine real quick. So, so remember how I had to go back in and I had to um, add you know, some, some extra lines, like you could actually come in and kind of demolish that top and then go back in and place them just where you want them to go. So see how mine don't look like a straight line. They kind of look kind of jagged, you know, as they go across and try that. All right. I'm going to bring yours back up. We're going to finish talking about it. This is really exciting because this is the first like really legitimate critique 
that I've been able to do in, in class. So I'm excited. Um, okay. So your grasses here look excellent. This is perfect. I wouldn't even change a thing. This is perfect. Do sign it though. Oh, I'm, I'm, I didn't realize I was using my mouse in the wrong area. Sorry. Do sign this. Um, right here is perfect because you've got like a nice white area in the corner. So I would go ahead and sign this. Um, it's kind of interesting. It looks like you've got like, because there's some darker shading here, it looks like you've got kind of like, um, like a mound of dirt here, you know, where it's, it's uneven and that looks really cool. So I definitely think that your grasses here look good. So, okay. So here's my feedback. Bring a little bit of dark, bring a little bit of um, shadow to the left side of your um, posts. And I think that will actually really bring those posts out and make them look rounded. Do a little bit of mist here at the top, like right over the top of your corn stalks. And then go in and place those a little bit more haphazardly. But I think just adding the mist there is actually going to make even this part here look really great. I love this misty, mistiness down at the bottom. Uh, I think your tree looks fine. I would maybe remember how I added like some grasses here. Like, so it wasn't like this weird white space. Add something there, even if it's another row. Like, see how you have this row of trees here? No, 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 no. The, your tree is great. I actually like the tree a lot. Um, but this row of tree here, maybe bring another one, do what you did here and bring it down in here. I think that would actually look really good. It would almost look like maybe bushes or something in the background. I think this is excellent, Crixano. I think that probably you're too hard on yourself, but which is, you know, that's the artist way, right? You know, we're all hard on ourselves. Um, so the key is to, instead of being hard on yourself, be realistic with yourself and say, okay, here's what I could work on. Here's what I did really well. You know, I think overall your piece is excellent. So don't, don't beat yourself up too much about it. It's actually quite good. So, um, you know, I take that for what it's worth, but as a teacher, I, I, you know, who's been doing art for, you know, 30 plus years and teaching art for, um, almost that long, I, I think that you are an excellent artist. So, so don't, don't be too hard on yourself. <laughs> it's all about what we can learn, right? It's all about what we can learn to do better, you know, and improve ourselves. And, um, you only have a few things really. So, okay. Uh, Flux says one thing you like, uh, is to add imperfections in your work. It draws the eye. That's true. Actually, you can add like things in your drawing that, that maybe. Um, you weren't supposed to be there or something and like it, it does become like an imperfection. So the trick for trees is it make the, the branches make the shape. That's true. So like, remember how I wasn't liking the shape of it. So I actually like, okay, I'm going to have a branch come out here. Like your branches make your shape. So you, you pull a branch out and then just add leaves to it, you know? Pull a branch out, add leaves to it. And that's what makes your shape. Mine could probably go a little bit taller, but I'm not going to. I'm not gonna. I'm gonna leave it just like that. Um, and actually, now that I went in here with a 6B pencil and like added some stuff, I don't think I need to do any more. I think like that actually added enough depth and darkness. So see, earlier I got rid of the darkness and then I brought it right back. It always lives in my heart. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, that's true. You can like a little background branch, you know, and just a little, a little thing. That probably wasn't what I really wanted to do there, but I'm not going to erase it. I'm just going to make it lighter. It was just, I forgot that I have a 6B pencil in my hand, which is much darker than anything else I've done on the tree. <laughs> So that wasn't the best thing for me to do. I should have done that with like a 4B pencil uh, or even 2B. Okay, so I've added in this little, these little bits. I'm not going to add any more in. I think that this is, like, I don't even think I'm going to do any more to it at all. I think I'm going to leave it. Yeah, I know, right? Oops. 
hey, you know, happy accidents, right? It gave me, that wasn't necessarily an accident for this. It gave me an opportunity to talk about um, remembering which pencil you have in your hand when you're working. And also look at the side of my finger. <laughs> Uh, so that's another thing too. Just remember to have your napkin or whatever, um, underneath you. Okay. I call this a success. I want to thank you for joining my stream tomorrow. We are going to be doing a watercolor and, uh, next week I'm going to be at my sister's. So I will not be doing my drawing stream. However, the reason I'm going to my sister's is I'm going to be babysitting her little kittens, she's fostering kittens. And so she's got three kittens of different ages, all very little. So I'm going to do a kitten stream next week. It'll be just chatting. I will have the kittens. I might talk about some kind of art. Like we, we might maybe look at art. Uh, I might do like a little art history lesson or something like that. Um, so it'll be art related, but it's gonna be mostly kittens. Not gonna lie, cute kitten stream. That is what's going on next week, same time. So, uh, thank you so much for joining my stream. I hope to see you tomorrow at 2 p.m. Pacific uh, for my watercolor. Otherwise, I hope you have a fantastic weekend, and I'll talk to you later. Thanks, guys.